Hi there everyone, welcome back to Objectivity. We are joined today by special guest Steve Mould. He's a science presenter. You've probably seen him maybe on live shows or on TV blowing things up and burning things. I have heard it said on more than one occasion that your middle name is Danger. Uh, yes, it's not, it's Peter, but no, people do say that. Um, I, I, I didn't call myself Danger, but it, it's... I like Danger better than Peter, so, so <laughs> although fun. Peter is a nice name, it's my father's name, <laughs> oh, but I think Danger is a good middle name. <laughs> I want to show you more things associated with Danger and people who've done okay. science Danger. That is sounds it, good. Yeah, that's, that sounds our, good. that's our theme today. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Are you with me? Yeah, show me stuff. All right, all right. So the first thing, and Keith is the man who's dug these up as always, yep. And when he told me about this one, it, this isn't immediately going to grab you, all right? Okay. Because this is basically, what is this, Keith? Like an, like an accountant's book? Or? That's right. It's the Treasure of the Royal Society's Book of Accounts. We are on May 30, 1734. It says, to the woman that offered to be bit by a viper. <laughs> okay. What have they paid her? Uh, that's one pound, one shilling. One pound, one shilling. So to it's, a, all... it's a guinea. Yeah. And there's, a, there's another related entry. Uh, here, you can read this one, Steve. August 28. Carriage for two boxes of snakes <laughs> and vipers. Six shillings. Six shillings. <laughs> it's about William Oliver, who's a snake catcher right. in Bath. And he's got this cunning plan to make money. Uh, he's got an oil recipe to, uh, uh, to cure you of, of, of the venom from snake bite. Uh, so okay. in order to demonstrate this, he has to have someone to, willing to be bitten. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And we think this is probably his wife, actually. But <laughs> he did do it himself as well. So okay. it's kind of science, but it's a bit of public entertainment as well. So he yeah, does this in pubs and taverns. Uh, and of course... Sounds familiar, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> bit of science, yeah, right, bit okay. of entertainment. Yeah. So the idea, presumably, is that uh, once a demonstration is over, yeah. everybody's going to be mad keen to buy this oil that can cure you of snake bites. So there we go. This strikes me as a potentially hazardous thing to do. I really like that. That's it, great. It is dangerous. Let's look at something very famous in the world of safety, and particularly to do with fire. And I know you yeah. love fire. Love fire. Yeah, big fan. Let me okay. get this for you. So this is a very nice object. Now, Steve, I have the impression you think you know what this is. <laughs> this has got to be a Davy lamp. This is, is it a Davy lamp? It is a Davy lamp, yeah. yes. This is yeah. one made by Humphrey Davy. <laughs> made by Davy. That's incredible. So it's not the full lamp, it's a gauze, as you can see, and there's yeah. some evidence that there's a wick in there. It's essentially a flame arrester. All it means is um, oxygen can get in, but the, the gauze is fine enough that the, the flames can't kind of travel out and ignite whatever flammable thing is in your mine or, or wherever you are. So these uh, are often associated with mining. That's right, isn't it, Keith? That's right. So uh, coal mine explosions, fire damp explosions were genuinely fatal. That they What's could fire kill damp? It. It's a combustible mixture of, of oh. gases and coal dust. Okay. So uh, some mines were very notorious for this. Uh, they could kill a lot of people. Uh, and quite a few um, scientists and others were working on solutions to this problem. George Stevenson, most famously, right. the railway engineer, right. but also Humphrey Davy. I said you don't hear Stevenson as a name when you think about safety lamps. I'm from the northeast of England, and I do. We, okay. we, all, we all know up there that Stevenson <laughs> invented the safety lamp. Okay. <laughs> Davy was just president of the Royal okay. Society, you know. Right. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So, I, so I'm going to move this away, and we'll show you something else. So this is what we're going to show you finally. You're not showing me a risk assessment. Well, I don't know. You're not as far off as you think. When you've got gauze, which is, is kind of slightly fire retardant, flame retardant, what do you do with it? Well, the obvious answer, you make a suit out of it. <laughs> okay. No, that's brilliant. And a shield as well. Yep. Yeah. Is that someone on, it, on his back as well? That's right, he's rescuing a small child. If you were a superhero, that would be your suit. That would be me, yeah. I'm, I hate to think what my origin story would be, but... Um... There's a second picture here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is that part of testing or is someone it doing is, that because yeah. they have to do it? Yeah, okay, no, right. that's, that's a test you just to show how well it works. Now, I'm afraid this paper is in French. Okay. Where, what is this, Keith? Do you have any idea? Yeah, I mean, the, the scientist who designed this is, is very well known indeed. This is uh, Giovanni Jean or John Aldidi, depending right. on which country you're in. And he designed this suit for the use of firemen. Right. Now, I, there are a few technical drawbacks in, in the suit I should probably point Go out. On. Now, he did demonstrate... The metal gets hot? 
the metal gets hot, but um, <laughs> I didn't think of that actually. That's a good point. <laughs> you'd uh, you see, I'm always thinking risk yeah. assessment. Yeah. But, um, uh, you'd probably call that the Stevenson suit, wouldn't you? I, I, I probably <laughs> would, yeah. Um, but happily, he, he he thought about the heat bit, so yeah. he decided he would have a, an asbestos suit underneath it, just as, as, as an extra measure. Really yeah, safe. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very good. Um, <laughs> But he would demonstrate the suit by uh, setting up experiments where, as you can see here, there are piles of wood. So he would make a corridor of wood, right. and, but set it afire and, and basically run through it before an audience of people. This is similar to the suits that they use now when they're working on uh, high voltage power lines. Uh, and so it's, it's actually a Faraday cage as well, mm. this, this guy is... Uh is wearing but um yeah i think that's amazing i wonder i mean I, and a superhero suit as well yeah i, I could definitely see mm. myself in that well if we come along to your next show and we see this being demonstrated we expect a little royal society objectivity okay, credit yep. line all right <laughs> okay great so, let, guys it's been a real treat you've shown me some brilliant stuff here thank you all right there was a great explosion in the sky above china and at a place called kieran a huge meteorite broke into pieces and smashed into the ground and it has been a really fertile area of research ever since. And one fragment of that meteorite has found its way here to the Royal Society. Conveniently, here it is. Let's glove up in case we start getting hardcore. <laughs> 